All right, so Shell Oil thinks, hey, you know what, we got a brilliant new idea. Why don't we drill for oil in the Arctic? I'm sure it'll be perfectly safe. That's what they've been assuring us all along, and of course, this happened on Monday night. Rough weather keeping the Coast Guard from getting to an oil rig that ran aground off of Alaska. The rig, owned by Shell, broke away from a tow ship during a powerful storm Monday night. The crew was evacuated safely, but the rig is carrying roughly 150,000 gallons of diesel fuel. So far, there is no sign of a spill. Oops. Now, I wish a show had talked about whether this might happen. Oh, right, we did. Kristen Bauer of True Blood on HBO had come on here to give awareness to this issue as part of her effort to help out Greenpeace on this. And here's what she had said at the time. These things tend to leak, and we tend to not be able to clean them up. And that's in the Gulf, which looks like a sweet little duck pond compared to the conditions of the Arctic. Well, she's totally right about that. In fact, Shell trying to do some testing in Puget Sound off of Seattle to make sure that they had everything right. Well, they didn't. As Mark Fessmeyer from the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement Alaska office said, it's as bad as I thought. Basically, the top is crushed like a beer can. Oops. That was their testing in relatively calm Puget Sound. Not in the middle of the Arctic. Now, what's going to happen when they do it in the middle of the Arctic? Probably disaster. Well, there was a documentary made for the Center for American Progress called Oil and Ice, and they talked about if there is that disaster, well, we might have a lot of trouble getting to it. Within 500 miles of the Deepwater Horizon drill site, emergency workers had access to hundreds of airports, dozens of major seaports, and 30 Coast Guard facilities. Not to mention countless hotels, highways and roads, and a fleet of fishing boats to help clean up the spilled oil. These resources and infrastructure simply do not exist in the Arctic. Well, that could be significant trouble. Now let's talk to an expert on this. Professor Richard Steiner is a professor of marine conservation at Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, professor, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about how much harder it is to drill in the Arctic than it is to say, for example, in the Gulf Coast. Well, it's a whole different environment, to be sure. There's a whole different series of technical challenges and environmental challenges in the Arctic. The drilling that Shell was doing this summer in 2012 in the Arctic was in shallower fields and shallower water, but it hasn't been drilled before this far offshore in the Arctic Ocean. This is new stuff. And you know, the grounding of the Kulak here the, in the last few days is simply the, la the most recent in a string of of calamities that has, you know, befallen the Shell program for 2012. It's been a one after the next after the next, and it does not inspire confidence in their safety culture. So, uh, one would imagine if that were the case, that the government, especially led by a progressive Democrat, uh, would say, hey, wait a minute here, yeah. let's be really careful in how we do this and have strict regulation. Is that what's happening? Well, unfortunately, you're absolutely correct. The government needs to step in here and do its job on behalf of we, the people of the United States. And we are calling after this most recent debacle, the grounding of the Kulak, we're calling for a timeout for 2013 Arctic drilling, offshore drilling. Um, clearly, Shell has had so many mishaps all the way along the, the way in 2012 that they don't have their act together, and neither the government doesn't either. Both Shell and the, the Department of Interior have been promising the people of the U.S. that they have this all worked out, all the contingency plans are in place, and here even the most simplest crossing of the Gulf of Alaska towing this rig they should have had a contingency for losing the tow in heavy weather. They didn't. And so all these promises that Shell has made remind me a lot of the promises that uh, Exxon and Alyeska, the pipeline owner, made to build the pipeline across Alaska in the early 1970s, which obviously were uh, broken by the time of the Exxon Valdez. So here we go again. And so talk to me about if Shell starts drilling there and something goes wrong, yeah. You know, what do, what do you think will happen? Do you think Shell has any kind of a backup plan to, because they say that we can contain it. We saw obviously BP couldn't contain it in the Gulf Coast. Is there any chance that Shell can contain it in the middle of the Arctic? There is a chance. You know, if everything goes according to plan, 
and all the equipment works as envisioned, and all the individuals uh, exercise prudent judgment, if all the stars are in line, there is a chance that a blowout could be quickly uh, stopped and or contained at the source. But the probability is that it would not. And that is the risk that I think a number of us, and including the, the, the Inupiaq along the north coast of Alaska, are very, very worried about. And we should, everybody should be. The, you know, Shell says that they have uh, good well integrity design, well design, integrity protocols, blowout preventer, capping stack, containment dome, oil spill response equipment, and all of that is fine works. You just see in the testing you mentioned in the lead up to this piece, containment dome where it failed entirely. Their oil spill response utter failure. The right. um, the, the noble discovery was drilling the Chukchi wells has had a stack fire. They drug anchor in Dutch Harbor almost grounded. They were in sewer just a, right. about a month ago because of an, all sorts of safety problems. They have had problem after problem after problem, right. and even the most simple contingency planning process they can't seem to get right. All right, Professor Steiner, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, and uh, that's some actual expertise for you guys there as opposed to the government and the companies reassuring us over and over again that it's going to work. By the way, before we leave you, I just want to show you one quick map. If there is a blowout and they can't contain it, to give you a sense of how hard it would be to get to that blowout, let me show you Alaska and, and the U.S. there. See, the Gulf Coast is next to all those different places, which is incredibly easy to access. You see how big Alaska is? Trying to get to the blowout is going to be a minor miracle with so little resources in the area. It's a disaster waiting to happen. But we got to make the money. we got to dig deeper. we got to dig deeper. We're like the dwarves in Lord of the Rings. I'm going to release the Balrog soon. Look at that reference. All right, now when we come back, speaking of movies.